Hello and happy Wednesday morning greetings from Radically Rational and RadicallyRational.com. Duck, looks like the Phillies just hit another homer. Astros, please hang on in game four tonight. All right, so the College Football Playoff Committee has issued their first rankings. There'll be five more to come before we figure all of this out. I got no gripe coming at this point. You got Tennessee number one. I concur there. Ohio State, yeah, they're playing better defense than they have in past years, so I get that. Georgia's Georgia. Clemson may be a little shaky at number four. And TCU, they got a gripe coming if they want to, but they got plenty of time to straighten this out. Frogs, all you got to do is keep winning and everything will be fine. You know, in the past, there really weren't a lot of player-for-player -player trades in the NFL, but look what happened yesterday before the 3 o'clock central deadline. We had 10 different deals. Really some interesting things went on, and all I can say is that clearly the Dolphins are going for it right now. They made a series of very, very good moves. All right, a, a, a couple of things. I want to talk about burden of proof because apparently some people don't understand the concept of burden of proof. When you make some outrageous, groundless claim with no evidence whatsoever, and then you tell people to, well, prove that I'm wrong, you can't possibly really be that stupid, right? That's just not honest. You realize that it's not up to somebody else to prove that you're wrong when you make outrageous, groundless claims. It's up to you to prove that you're right. And you can't because you're not right because there's no evidence. We saw that with the big lie and now all these ridiculous tales that are flying around about Paul Pelosi and I actually had what I thought was an otherwise intelligent human being tell me yesterday, prove that I'm wrong. No, no, that's not the way this works. And finally, there are limitless reasons to oppose Greg Abbott as governor of Texas. But here's the biggest one. Yeah, we can talk about all these completely pandering, grandstanding cultural wars that takes up all of his time, but he can't run the state. Every single time in eight years as governor that he's been faced with a critical moment, he has failed miserably every single time. What y'all worked up about this time, Paul? Very simple. Every single day, we learn more about the travesty and the tragedy that was our response or non-response to the massacre in Uvalde. There is a newly issued audio tape and you have to hear it. It's painful, it's excruciating, it will make you cry, it is shameful, but you have to hear it. There is a newly released audio tape of 10-year-old Chloe Torres and she is the coolest person in the entire loop. She is barricaded in a classroom surrounded by dead bodies. And she's on the phone, coolly pleading for help, and none is coming. None is coming for 40 minutes. Now, we're happy, we're delighted, we're grateful that Chloe survived, but 19 other kids and two teachers did not. I would say that, that a very valid barometer of a culture's health is how well they protect their children. And we failed miserably once again while we were off busy fighting culture wars. Sorry, Abbott, this was on your watch like all of these other things, but I guess it could have been worse. We are radically rational.